I was surprised, shocked, and chagrined at the amount of heavy metals, things like aluminum, arsenic, cadmium, and lead that are in some of these sea salts. And when you break down the math, I'm gonna show you guys all of this in this video. Humans eat on average around nine grams of salt per day. That's not sodium, that's salt, which is sodium chloride. When you're eating that much salt per day, many of these salts will cause you to exceed the tolerable limit for lead, specifically that heavy metal in a day, which is not a good thing. All of these heavy metals are harmful and damaging for humans, but especially lead in these salts could be very problematic for you, for your loved ones, and for your children. So I think it's really important to understand how many heavy metals are in your foods in general. Fish, seafood is a big contributor to heavy metals, but I was very startled by how much heavy metal contamination is in these salts. So let's get right into it, guys. What are we talking about here? We're talking about aluminum, a heavy metal that is often associated with increased rates of Alzheimer's dementia, the cognitive issues, memory loss later in life. Where else do we find aluminum? Aluminum foil. Don't wrap your food in aluminum foil because that aluminum is gonna leach into the food. It's in cans, but those cans are lined with plastic. So that aluminum from cans doesn't really leach into the liquid, but the BPA, the BPS, the BPE, the other endocrine disruptive chemicals in the plastic do leach into your cans. That's a subject for a different YouTube video. So aluminum is a big problem. Aluminum is also found in some of deodorants and antiperspirants. Potentially we could absorb it through our skin. And then we also need to think about arsenic. Arsenic is often found in dirt, in the earth, and it's a contaminant in many of these salts. Excess amounts of arsenic are traditionally associated with increased rates of many cancers. Cadmium is another heavy metal. You may have thought about cadmium in terms of batteries, but cadmium is often high in shellfish. I know this pains me to think about this, but things like shrimp, things like scallops, lobsters, these are high in cadmium because they're benthic, they're on the bottom of the ocean. Excess amounts of cadmium in the human body are linked to cancers and many kidney issues in humans. Last but not least, lead. Lead is pervasive in our environments. We used to have lead-based paints, we had lead-based gasolines. Lead exposure traditionally has been associated with lower IQs, neurodevelopmental issues in kids, delayed growth in terms of motor and verbal outcomes. Basically, lead makes us dumb. <laughs> It also gives us increased rates of cardiovascular disease, the heart, the kidneys, can disrupt our hormones. All of these heavy metals wreak havoc in the human body and you want to minimize them as much as possible. Broadly, you can reduce your heavy metals by things like filtering your tap water, which is also highly contaminated with heavy metals in some areas of the world, by not eating dirt usually, by selecting fish carefully. Many of the bigger fishes, the tunas, the swordfish, the shark, that has very high amounts of mercury and other heavy metals, but even small fish can cause issues in terms of arsenic or mercury sometimes. So being careful with your fish consumption and testing levels in your body is not a bad thing if you're eating a lot of fish. But also you need to think about your salt. And I'm gonna tell you which of these is the worst and which of these is the best in one moment. But if you want to know how many heavy metals are in your body, you can do blood tests. Generally you'd wanna test lead, mercury, cadmium, and arsenic. We don't usually test aluminum in the blood. And you can do that in your blood and you'll see the current exposure. So if you get a blood test for heavy metals, something I like to do probably twice a year for myself, it'll tell you what your current exposure is. If there's something in your life that's recurring, that's causing metal exposure, you're gonna see it in the blood. Chronic exposure to metals is a little bit trickier. Sometimes people do provoked urine tests. You probably have to work with a functional medicine doctor for that. Or sometimes you can do hair tests. Hair tests are variable accuracy, so you wanna make sure you do a good one and work with someone who knows what they're talking about when they're interpreting a hair test for heavy metal analysis. But knowing what is in your body in terms of heavy metals is critical for your long-term health. A lot of people don't understand how high their heavy metal burden is, especially if they're drinking tap water, they're not filtering it, if they're eating a lot of fish because they're fearing red meat, and if you don't know about salt. So let's think about these salts. We've got Celtic sea salt, Redmond salt, Baja gold, we've got a Jacobson sea salt, and diamond kosher. If I told you that one of these salts is clearly the worst with pretty high levels of all of the heavy metals, aluminum, cadmium, arsenic, and lead, which of these do you think it would be? Mm -hmm. It's actually this one, and this was very surprising to me. The Celtic sea salt has very high levels of all of the heavy metals, and I have notes here. I'm gonna tell you guys what it has. So Celtic sea salt, this is technical, 171 parts per million in aluminum, 82 parts per billion arsenic, 1.2 parts per billion in cadmium, and 553 parts per billion in lead. If you do the calculations, eating 8.8 .8 grams 
of a Celtic sea salt, a salt that I used to eat a lot of, you would get 4.87 micrograms of lead per day. All of that is just fancy numbers, but take that in the context of the fact that the tolerable upper limit for lead in a day is 0.5 micrograms, half a microgram. If you had one day of an average consumption of salt, of the Celtic sea salt, you'd be getting almost 10 times that amount of lead. So definitely this one is out according to this analysis. Scary stuff. Now, that's the worst. What do you guys think is the next worst? And this kind of breaks my heart because I've definitely used Redmond in the past. Redmond doesn't look very good either. And Redmond has pretty high levels of all of the same things, but Redmond is also really high in lead. So Redmond sea salt had 252 parts per billion of lead, meaning that if you ate 8.8 grams of this per day, the average, you'd get 2.22 micrograms of lead per day. Again, far above the tolerable upper limit of 0.5 micrograms per day. So worst, not great either. And even though Baja Gold says that they test for purity, Baja Gold has a huge amount of lead in it. Okay guys, I just wanna give some commentary here. Those California Prop 65 guidelines, 0.5 micrograms of lead per day is pretty low by a lot of standards. The FDA, and say what you will about this, says the tolerable upper limit of lead is 12 micrograms per day. So California Prop 65 is 0.5, FDA is 12 micrograms of lead per day. Now this is interesting because there's really no safe level of lead per day. You don't want any lead in your diet. We're all getting some lead from things like chocolate, from salts. But I just want you guys to understand that many of us might be exceeding 0.5 micrograms of lead per day in our daily life just from eating regular foods, but you really don't want much more than that, you know? And this Celtic sea salt has almost five micrograms of lead per day, so it's clearly the highest but I just wanna give some context for that 0.5 micrograms of lead level. That's probably not an absolute upper threshold. It's just a significantly interesting level from California. So don't get too stressed out about 0.5 micrograms of lead per day. Just understand that that's the California Prop 65 level, which is very low. And if you can get below that, that's great. Again, no safe level of lead. You don't want any lead in your diet or your children's diets, but we're all getting exposed to some. Clearly the FDA level of 12 micrograms of lead per day is probably a little bit too high. That's probably a little bit too much tolerance. So try and minimize the amount of lead in your diet overall and knowing which sea salt has the most is a good way to start with that. Back to the video. The Baja Gold sea salt had 337 parts per billion in lead, giving you basically three micrograms of lead per day if you have 8.8 .8 grams of salt. So even though Baja Gold is saying they're testing for all these contaminants, it has a lot of lead in it. I wanna show you guys some that actually did pretty good. I just wanna pause for one second to tell you guys about our honey from Lineage. Just like salt can be contaminated with heavy metals, a lot of honey is contaminated with glyphosate and other pesticides. I'm really proud of what we've done here. Check us out, lineageprovisions.com. It's a glyphosate-free honey that is raw and organic. I don't promote other people's stuff. The only things I promote are companies that I own and things I've built. I eat this every day and I, I feel very proud to make very high quality products like this that are clean. I love honey, you guys know this. Check out our glyphosate free honey at Lineage. Back to the salt. So there's a lot of salts tested in this independent analysis, but the Jacobson was one of the better ones. Jacobson has small amounts of aluminum, small amounts of arsenic, cadmium, and lead, but nothing like these. The Jacobson salt had undetectable lead, 0.5 parts per billion cadmium, 9.8 arsenic, and 1.69 parts per million aluminum. So in terms of sea salts, the Jacobson is pretty darn good, so that's a good option. Now, this last thing really surprised me, guys. The diamond kosher salt flakes had nothing. They were the cleanest, which is kind of crazy when you think about it. And I don't know how to feel about this because diamond kosher salt flakes are made by Cargill. This is a huge agribusiness company, but in this independent analysis, which probably needs to be repeated, the diamond kosher salt flakes had no aluminum, no arsenic, no cadmium, no mercury, and no lead. So. According to this analysis, this looked to be the cleanest sea salt. It's something I've been experimenting with. It doesn't taste bad. It's not expensive. You can get it on Amazon. I just would like to see some repeat analyses to confirm these because Cargill has been associated with Monsanto in the past, and it's not necessarily a company I feel great about. But look, if they can make a clean salt, I wanted to tell you guys about it. So I think getting salt in your diet every day is a critical part of hydration. The very simple message with regard to hydration is that most people need around 2.3 liters of fluid per day from a variety of sources. And if you couple that 2.3 liters of fluid with around eight, nine grams of salt per day, you'll be pretty well hydrated. 
but where do you get that salt from? So it was very eye-opening to me to see that some of these were really bad, things that I'd used in the past, things I thought were healthy, Celtic sea salt, Redmond sea salt, Baja gold, and now I'm basically using Jacobson's and Diamond Kosher salt flakes. And they taste good, but it makes me feel better about the fact that I'm limiting the amount of heavy metals in my diet. So in this video, I've talked about heavy metals in salt. Unfortunately, the story doesn't end there and you have to go one level deeper in terms of microplastics. Now, this independent analysis didn't test for microplastics in salt. So hopefully we can get more of that in the future, but it's another thing to think about. The biggest sources of microplastics are also gonna be things like fish, food that is stored in plastic, but we're gonna to have to think about microplastics in these salt as well. I don't have microplastic data on most of these, but that's something to think about with your salt also. Hopefully this has been helpful for you guys. Hopefully it's helped you think about heavy metals in your diet and helped you make a better selection for salt. I will see you guys in the next video. Oh,